For some reason, a lot of people really liked this very wonky Pochita I crocheted, so here's my attempt at a tutorial. Um, for materials, all you need is yarn, a crochet hook, and a large sewing needle. I'll link everything that I used below. And just in case anyone is watching this and doesn't actually know how to crochet, I did a little crochet tutorial speed run at the beginning. If you do know, you can just skip to the next chapter. First thing though, you have to know how to start a chain. I grab the yarn and wrap it around two fingers and make this X shape. Then I take my crochet hook, I go under the first piece and over the second piece and hook the second piece and pull it through. Then once you have this little loop, you can pull your fingers out and then I grab each piece of the yarn and pull it in two different directions to tighten it. There's a few ways to start this, but this is the way I was taught. Then to make a chain, all you have to do is wrap your yarn, which is called a yarn over. You grab the second piece with your crochet hook and pull it through the loop that is currently on your crochet hook, and that is one chain. To do another chain, you would just repeat. You would yarn over, hook it, and pull it through. Then you just do this as many times as your pattern specifies. Usually it'll say like chain 15 or something, however long is needed for your pattern, and that's just how many times you'll do the yarn over and pull through. Another use for chaining is when you're doing turning stitches, which not all patterns include, but it's basically when you get to the end of your work and you have to turn it, say you're doing single crochets, you'll need to do an additional chain to turn your work, and then you'll start single crocheting or whatever the stitch is into the second chain, not the one that you just did, and that's how you keep even edges on your crochet. Now that we've turned it, we can start a single crochet. We're going to skip the one that we just did because it's our turning stitch, and we're going to go through the second stitch. You will yarn over and pull it through that second stitch. Then once you have two loops on your hook, you'll yarn over again and pull it through both. And that is one single crochet. So you'll just do that as many times as your pattern tells you to. Um, showing another one now, you'll push through the next stitch, yarn over, pull it through. You will have two loops on your hook. You will yarn over again and pull it through both. When you're not on a chain and you're on actual other stitches, you'll have to go under two pieces of yarn, like as seen here, and then you'll do the same thing. You'll yarn over, pull through, have two loops, yarn over, and pull through again. Now the next thing is going to be an increase stitch, which is where you just do the stitch two times in the same stitch that you're crocheting into. So here you can see this is the next stitch that I'm going to be going into. Push under both pieces of yarn, yarn over, pull through, have two loops, yarn over, pull through. Now to make it an increase stitch, instead of going to this next one, we're going to do it again in the same stitch we just crocheted in. So push through, yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through. And then increase stitch you will see a lot. Now for the hardest one of this is a double crochet. First you will yarn over, then you'll push through your stitch, you will yarn over again and pull through. Then you have three loops on your hook. Next you will yarn over again, so now you have four, but you're going to pull this through only the first two, and then you should have two loops left on your crochet hook. Then you will yarn over one more time and pull it through both, and that is one double crochet. Now to do it again, because this is a long one, yarn over, push through your stitch under both pieces of yarn, yarn over again, pull it through, you should have three loops on your hook, yarn over again, pull it through only two of the loops. You should have two loops on your hook, yarn over one more time, and pull it through both. Because I'm using this fluffy yarn, it'll be really hard to actually see the stitches happening in the tutorial, so make sure you can do each of these before you actually start it, because it is impossible to show on black fluffy yarn the actual stitches that you're going into. Now the easiest one for last, all you do, push through, yarn over, grab it, and instead of doing anything else, you just pull it through the loop that was originally on your hook, and that is a slip stitch. So once again, push through the stitch, yarn over, if I could stay in frame, and then pull it through the loop originally on your hook. Good thing this one's easy, because I can't stay in frame. Okay, for the actual tutorial now, first of all, the body, I actually used this frog pattern, because for some reason I thought that would be the best. Um, it's a really good tutorial though, I didn't do a walkthrough, because she already has one in her video and it's really good. All you do is make the same body, but you use orange instead. Okay, we're starting with the easiest piece, which is the tail. Um, they're actually all easy because I don't know how to crochet hard things, but this is the easiest. First you will chain four. Then after your chain, you're going to turn your work and you're going to single crochet one into the next stitch. That isn't your turning stitch. 
So single crochet one, we're making the triangle shape of his tail right now. And then after that, you will chain four again. Each part of this triangle on his tail is technically a chain of three, but we're using the fourth chain as a turning stitch, which is why when you get to the end, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to skip the turning stitch and you're going to single crochet into the second stitch of your chain. After you've done the single crochet, you're going to do the last piece of the triangle, which is going to be a chain of three. But once you get to the end of your chain, instead of doing a fourth stitch to turn, you're actually going to do a single crochet into the very first chain that we did and this is how you're going to connect your triangle. After you finish that single crochet this is where you should have your triangle shape. The next part is to actually make the length of his tail which for this I just used a chain. Um, just chain as many as you want to the desired length of the tail. Okay, now to make the eye, you have to start with a magic circle and you'll do six single crochets around this. I forgot to include how to do a magic circle in the tutorial in the beginning, so I'll link a tutorial for it below. Um, it's basically what you use anytime you want to do a round shape instead of doing a chain. And you can do your initial single crochets around the loop and then pull the loop tight to have a perfect circle. This is how it should look after you've done your six crochets and you pull the loop. After you've pulled the loop tight, you can start doing the second round of stitches, which for this, you should have a total of six stitches and you're going to do six increased stitches, which will give you a total of 12 stitches at the end of this row. And you have to use increased stitches all the way around so that we can actually make the circle bigger as we go around. It's really hard on camera to show what's happening with black fluffy yarn, but basically it's just you do two single crochets into each stitch all the way around the circle. For the next part, it's just the white of the eyes, so you're going to switch to your white yarn after you do this last stitch of increase. Um, and for the white, it's just a row of only slip stitches, all 12 stitches around. I used slip stitches instead because I didn't want the whites of the eyes to be too big since the majority of his eyes are black. Um, if you do want them to be bigger though, you can either do another row or use a bigger stitch like a single crochet. After you finish the last slip stitch of white, you can go ahead and pull it through and you don't have to leave a yarn tail because I actually sewed this on with black yarn through the middle of the eye. This is the only piece that you'll have to make two of. Um, all the other pieces you'll just make one. Now this piece is for the handle. This is the smaller one that goes on his butt. Um, you'll start out with a chain of 15. After you finished your chain, this is what it should look like. You're going to chain one additional for your turning stitch. And then you're going to start off with a single crochet of four on your chain. After you've done your chain of four, you're going to do an increased single crochet. So you're going to single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to do a second single crochet into the same stitch and this is going to create the curve of the handle. After that, for the next five stitches in your chain, you're just going to do single crochet five times. Then for the last part of the chain, you're going to do one more increased single crochet. So two single crochets into the same part of the chain. And then you'll finish it off with four single crochets at the end. Okay. 
After you finish the last four single crochets, that is actually all you need for the smaller handle. If you want to make it thicker, you can do another row. I liked it just as this shape. Now for the head handle, which is the larger one, you have to start out with a chain of 21 instead. Now again, you have to crochet one more stitch after your chain to do your turning stitch. After that, you'll single crochet five stitches into your chain. Now this is the same process as the smaller handle, um, it's just more stitches. So you'll do another increased stitch now um, and this will create the curve of the handle again. After that you will single crochet 9 to go down the middle of the handle and then you will do another increased stitch. After you complete that increase stitch, you will finish off this row by doing single crochet five all the way to the end of the chain. You should now have a shape really similar to the tail one, but a little bit longer. Um, we're going to do a second row on this one though. So the first thing you'll do is chain one to turn again, and you're going to single crochet five once more up the side of the handle. One part that's different here is instead of doing an increased single crochet, you're going to do an increased double crochet for this part. Then after you finish the double crochet increased stitch, you're going to single crochet 11. After you single crochet all the way down, it's going to be another increased double stitch to finish the other curve of the handle. So here is after I did the single crochet 11 across, this is the increased double crochet for the other part of the handle. After you finish the increased double crochet, it's going to be another single crochet 5 till the end of the handle, and then that'll be it. That'll be the last row. And here's what your handle should look like at the end. Again, if you want to make it thicker, you can do an additional row, but I preferred this shape. Now the chainsaw is like the jankiest part of this tutorial because it's what I struggled with the most, but I'll show you what I did. Um, first thing is you chain six. This is actually going to be the center of the chainsaw, so it's going to be a little bit smaller because we're going to work our way around it. After you chain six, you're going to chain one more for your turning stitch, and then you're going to single crochet five, which is going to bring you all the way down the chain that you just made. Now when you get to the last stitch, we're working our way all the way around this chain, so we're actually going to increase stitch three times into the last stitch, and this is going to bring us to the underside of the chain that we already crocheted on. Mm -hmm. 
after you've done the three increased stitches, you should be on the other side of the chain now. Here you're going to single crochet five, which will take you all the way down to the end of the chain again. And then once you get to the end, you're going to chain one for a turning stitch again. And we're going to keep doing like a zigzag around this initial chain. After you get to the end and do your turning stitch, you're going to turn your work and you're going to single crochet five again to get back to the top of the blade. At the top, you're going to do two increased stitches. So it'll be two single crochets in two stitches, so four total. Um, and this is how we're going to create the rounded part of the blade. Here's where I'm doing the actual increase stitches, so I'm going into the same stitch twice, but I'm doing that for two stitches in a row. After that, you just make your way down the other side of the blade once again with another single crochet five, and once you get to the end, you chain one more to turn your work. Now to go back up the chainsaw, we're actually going to single crochet six this time because in the last row we did increase stitches and added the stitch count. Um, now once you get to the top, you're going to do the increase stitch twice once again. After the two increased stitches, you will single crochet back down the other side of the blade six times. This will bring you to the very end and this will be the end of the silver part of the blade and we'll switch to black. Here's what it looks like at the end of that row. This left part is really janky and I couldn't get it straight, but that's okay because that part gets sewed onto the body anyways. Now for the blade, this part was kind of difficult. I ended up starting with an initial slip stitch across the entire um, gray part of the blade just because I thought it made a nicer transition and didn't have some rough stitches going from silver to black. After you finished all the slip stitches all the way across, you're going to chain one to turn and we're going to follow a pattern to make the spikes. This is just what worked for me. Um, you will slip stitch three times. After the three slip stitches, you're going to chain three. And then after chaining three, you will single crochet back into the last stitch that you did your slip stitch into. And it'll force the chain to kind of become like a spike. And you can see here I am doing the chain three. Now I'm single crocheting back into the last stitch, pull through, yarn over and pull through. And it forces the chain to kind of bump upwards, which makes the pointed shape. And then you just repeat this all the way around the entire blade.
Now for the assembly, I my camera actually died, but that's okay because I really don't have anything fancy or correct to show here. I kind of just held up where I thought everything should go and then just used my yarn needle and just started sewing it on. Truly, sometimes I have to take it off and redo it if it's crooked, but you just kind of have to guess where you think things should go. I had to move my eyes a couple times actually. The only thing I didn't get to show was for the mouth, I did two chains of six with long yarn tails and just stitched those on to make the mouth under the chainsaw. And look, this is how he turned out. He's like really almost creepy, but cute at the same time. Um, I really like how soft he is with the plush yarn, even though it's awful to work with. He turned out a lot more thick than I expected, actually. <laughs> now, if you do make this, please tag me on Instagram so I could see. Or you can DM me if you're like, damn, this pattern's so hard to follow. Please help. And if you did make it this far and you did make the pattern, it'd be kind of wild if you didn't sub. So please do.